family travel vloggers, we love food and of course we love to travel. So it would be no surprise that we also love Anthony Bourdain. And he had a trip here to the Philippines years ago where he went to Pampanga, the culinary capital of the Philippines, and did a little tour. We're gonna follow his footsteps. But along the way, we have a pretty big pit stop to do a family photo shoot modeling gig for a resort that's on the way. If you didn't know, there's been a lot of modeling in our family, primarily with Brooklyn and Cole, who have been models since they were little kids. But first, we gotta meet up with our driver for the hour and a half trip up there, so let's go. We've got a bit of a tight squeeze back here. We have two employees, Hannah and Michelle from the resort, and we're all gonna head up there together. June is our driver. So let's start this hour and a half. We'll see you at the resort. We're headed to the edge of the Bulacan province, right outside of Pampanga province. And that's where we're gonna be experiencing the culinary capital of the Philippines later this evening. And as soon as we opened the door, all these dogs jumped in. They're greeting us. What a welcome. The dogs are still in the car. This is the little boutique resort that we're staying at for the night. It's Balay Alegria. Balay Alegria is great for a weekend getaway just outside of Metro Manila. And you can stay in one of their air-conditioned Cuba huts but we're really here just to help market the property with the upcoming photo shoot. So if you want a full tour of the property, check out Mom Duty's recent episode. We'll leave a link in the description. It's about 11 a.m. right now, so I'd say it took us a pretty solid 90 minutes as expected to get up here. And the first thing we're gonna do is go into the little cafe over here, which is very charming. And we're gonna talk about the shoot, get everything kind of planned out, and then maybe have something to eat, maybe a little bit of uh, water or something else to drink while we get ready for everything. He's a magazine sort of photographer. Afi, maybe we can just do like a shot where you guys are enjoying drinks. We'll just we'll just prepare some drinks for you, like okay. frap yeah. that you can try. That's okay. <laughs> so here, uh, just tell Afi if I, if I forget. I think we have almost everything planned out, but we're taking a little bit of a break here so that we can try this ube vodka. Probably made in the Philippines. Oh really? Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. This is ube. Oh wow, that is Ooh, beautiful. so thank you That's for coming. Okay. Ooh. All right. Okay. Here's what do you say here in yeah. Pampanga. Proudly made in the Philippines. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, you're right. That is ice cream vodka. Yeah. Ube ice cream <laughs> right? vodka. It's very you. good. It's good, very right? Good. You want to try it, baby? I'll try a tiny sip. It's very purpley. Oh, that's good. Ice cream. That tastes like ice cream. Ube ice cream. You know like when you get your scoops of ice cream and you let it all melt and you stir it and mix it up? That's what that tastes like. <laughs> well, let's see. You want to try it as well? All right, sure. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, salted caramel vodka. Proudly made in the Philippines. It's the first time I've had any Filipino vodka, unless you count Tito's. It's not fun. Caramel plus ube. What do you think, babe? I think it's delicious, baby. This would replace Bailey's on the rocks, ah. which I really like, especially like on a cold day on the snow. Hi, Tony. Tony and Earl. So they are. Tony and Earl. Hi, nice to meet you. They are Aaron. Hey, for, for Tony and Earl are the videographers because they're doing a little bit of a behind the scenes look of the photo shoot. And they're actually pretty well known videographers. They do indie films and an educational show here in the Philippines. Lunch is ready. G has set up a big spread for us. So we're ready to let the food part of our day begin. And they've got pool here. What an awesome open setup and a nice breeze coming in, but we have a little sign. Welcome Lockwood family. So take a plate, here you go. Um, we've got chicken, lechon, pork, lechon. Uh, this is beef, and this is kari kari, which is kind of like a peanut sauce. And then there's a grilled tilapia over there. Since this is a photo shoot, this is kind of like craft services, which we've had at other photo shoots before, but we've got to eat quickly because we're going to start shooting soon. We're gonna have a quick Filipino ice cream dessert. This is gabi cheese, and it means taro root cheese. 
but we're learning gabi also means evening, so evening cheese maybe. Uh, but it's really good. It tastes like cheese. It has like a cheesy component to it. And then there's like little chunks in there. And I think those are pieces of the taro root. What do you think of the cheese ice cream? Good. Good? I think it's delicious, but I'm wondering what these chunks in it are. Like corn? Okay, it is time to get changed for the shoot. Uh, we've got a few outfits, so we'll probably do a couple of changes in the middle. But time to put on the first one. Bubba ready. They wanted some neutral tones so that they can show off the resort more, and we're all ready to go. And we're gonna meet the photographer. I'm Erin. Nice Paolo, nice to meet you. We're about to get started. That was fun. And now G, she's one of the owners of Ballet Alegria where we are, but she's going to take us on a little food tour around town. Right now we're in Pulilan and it's right on the outskirts of Pampanga. And Pampanga is where all the food action is. Pampanga and the city is San Fernando. Anthony Bourdain was here almost 15 years ago, so a lot has changed since then. For example, the first restaurant that he visited, I have to read it, Arlene's Cardaria. All right, you're gonna have to tell me, how do you pronounce this? Arlene's Cardaria. Arlene's Cardaria. I didn't do too badly. They're closed now, and they were known for serving goat four ways. So we might have to find that at another restaurant. The next place that he went to is Aling Lusing, but it was a different branch. And they claim to be the original inventors of sisig, which is a very famous dish across the Philippines. She just had to go park, so now <laughs> let's go inside. You said you don't want to eat so much because we're going to hop onto another place. Yeah, yeah, so we've got to pace ourselves as always. Super interesting because, yeah, there's so many kinds of lechon, but when it comes to sisig, it's always the same, right? What parts of the pig face are in sisig? It's part of your, of the head of the pig. Is it yeah. cheek? Also the ears. Ears? Yes, the cheeks. Eyes? Yeah, no, not eyes. Oh, tongue? No, tongue, no. no? <laughs> it's only the uh, right face and the ears. Oh, okay. And also it has a uh, chicken liver. Chicken liver. Yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. A little That's bit of it. chicken in there. Well, we're going to have some sisig. Okay. Uh, anything else? To Esau. Esau is pig intestines nope. and... No? Chicken. Chicken intestines! And Colt's going to have some. G's going to have some. And it's going to leave the sisig to Phil and I. We've actually had sisig many times, but I don't think we ever knew that it was actually pig's face. In fact, I always thought that there were different kinds of sisig, like you could get pork or chicken or whatever. I get confused with a lot of the Filipino dishes, but all sisig is going to be the pig's face. So fast! Thank you. That was so fast. It only took them three minutes to make it. We order it. Three minutes later, it is sizzling and piping hot on our table. Step one is taking this calamansi, squeezing it, and putting it all over. Oh, we got some seeds in there. We're gonna have to watch out for those seeds now. And then mixing it. Now, we're good? We're good to go. That's really good. I love the texture of it. I thought it was actually gonna be crispy because of the sizzlingness of it, because it's so hot and this is like, Oh, I was gonna say cast iron, but it's just really hot. Um, but it's actually soft and a little bit chewy and really good. I was surprised how much I like the texture. And it's kind of salty and there's like a 
tinge of sweetness, maybe vinegar? Vinegar, yeah. <laughs> this guy's eating the intestines. Just as delicious as the last time I ate it. It's great. <laughs> I don't think I ate it with vinegar though. No? No. no. Mm. Anthony Bourdain said that this is the perfect beer food, but I don't really drink beer, so I'm doing a Coke Zero. Yeah, Coke Zero. That's what you call it here, right? Coke Zero? Yeah. Zero sugar, not Diet Coke, not, it's like so many variations, Coke Light. There's so much contrast in the texture with the different pieces too. Like, I wonder what this one is. Do you think this is skin or cartilage? I have no idea. And then the other ones look more like muscle. Yeah. Way firm. So much more fatty flavor in that one. And then you get it all together. I'm guessing that they put onion in here too, right? They do. Little chunks of onion. So by far the best way to do it is to get a bite of everything. You don't even need bread with it or crackers or anything like that. Although this would be really good in a hoagie roll, just stuffed full of sisig. We've had sisig tacos in BGC. That's really good also. This is phenomenal. I might like this as much as I like lechon. Anthony Bourdain has this to say about Sisig. If you've never had this divine mosaic of pig parts chopped and served sizzling and crisp on one side on a screaming hot platter, then you've yet to have one of the world's best beer drinking dishes. Boom. Thank you. Thanks. Now G's got another place for us to check out. She's taking us to LA Bake Shop and they have the original cheese bread. Well, we've got to grab some pasalubong for the people back at the resort. And of course, when we're here in this part of town, the go-to pasalubong is going to be the cheese bread. Oh no, the cheese bread that G wanted to get is sold out because we're here pretty late. Yeah. It's like almost 8 p.m. So we missed out on that. But are we going to still find something else? Yeah. All right, we're going to find something else to get. On the TV, that looks yeah. so good. It's so good when it's uh, when it's you. What's new? You're baked and you yeah. eat it. But then when you bring it home and you yeah. lost the the warning. Ah, uh, bummer. But we we've got ensemadas, ensemadas to take home with us. That's good. All right, we got our loot. We're going to the next spot now because Pasa Lubang is to take home to your loved ones. So right here in a huge parking lot shared by the Shell gas station is a really cool little area with a couple of restaurants and apparently this is a big hangout for professionals who finish up a hard day of work and then want to go chill someplace with some cocktails and some good food. So we're going to try a couple of Filipino dishes in here if we're lucky. One of these being the greatest of all time. The goat! Greatest of all time. It's the goat. And they've got some live music. I actually think it's karaoke. But it's pretty loud, so we're gonna try and get a table outside. I mentioned before that Anthony Bourdain came to Pampanga and had goat four ways. We're gonna have goat two ways, which is also a number. So we're gonna dig in. Goat number one is calderatong. Kambing. Kambing means goat. Kambing means goat. I'm going to do a little rice first because I know this is going to have some sauce that it needs to soak up. It looks like we have some potatoes and carrots. And I really want some rice. I mean some sauce. There we go. I'm going to get a little goat and a little carrot. So I've got everything in there. Plenty of sauce. Mmm. It's a little bit spicy, which I love. Because I think this is my first time trying goat. I think it has a texture really similar to lamb. But that is really, really spicy. And I like it. So like most of the flavor I'm getting is that spice from that sauce. And the goat is just like a really yummy uh, meat. Like it's, um, it's maybe a little bit stringy, similar to a lamb shake. Well, I'm gonna try the second type of goat here, and this one is adobo, which holds a special place in our hearts because if you caught our very recent episode where we actually tried to cook famous Filipino dishes at home, adobo chicken was one of those. Uh, 
smells incredible. These adobo spices are just next level. I'm gonna get just the meat by itself first. Mm, it's so flavorful. So much adobo seasoning on there. Aaron's adobo chicken was really good, but this is next level. It's almost like eating beef jerky. I don't know how much of a thing that is in the Philippines, but in the US, it's like so salty. And this is cooked so much, it's almost crispy. It's really, really good. I'm gonna try this goat number two. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think this adobo is better than my adobo. I think I like it better with the goat than the chicken because I think that dark meat actually gives it a little bit more like of a sweetness to it versus a chicken maybe is a little saltier. I don't know, maybe it's something with the searing that they have here. It's really good. Plus, I didn't put extra sugar in our adobo, which I gotta do next time. You may not believe this, but we've got more food to try. Next up, Sinigang na Hipong. So this is going to be our shrimp sinigang, and I've never had this one before, but uh, look at this incredible broth. Besides this incredible seafood broth, it looks absolutely nuts, and lots and lots of shrimp. We've got sea towel, the string bean stuff here, looks like radish. We've got maybe some tomato, some red bell pepper, and I think I see some okra in here, right here. Smells incredible. It's had a chance to cool down too, so it should be just fine digging right in. Such big chunks of vegetables and big chunks of shrimp, it's gonna be hard to get everything in one bite, but I'm gonna try this. It's a tomato, right? Mm -hmm. It's a tomato first. Mmm. Holy moly. That might be the best tomato I've ever eaten in my entire life. Colt and I often get this mixed up with jicama. We think it's jicama, it ends up not being jicama, it's radish. Colt doesn't like radish, I love radish. I love jicama, but radish is a no-no for me. It's so good. Now for the shrimp, yeah, it's still shell on, which is great for the flavor of the broth. Difficult for my fingers to pull apart when it's hot and a little bit messy, but let's go. Put the little head back in there for some additional flavor. Do a little movie magic with Aaron's editing, so it looks like this went really quickly. All right. My little napkin. Yeah, it's a good shrimp, really good shrimp. Good size, too. All right, turns out we love Sinigang, especially not Hippon. Sinigang, I think, has calamansi in it, because it has a tang, like a, a limey, citrusy taste to it, and also vinegary, a little bit salty. I love those seasonings. So yummy. Thank you. Crispy pate. Now, Phil and I have had crispy pate before at a Denver restaurant called Manila Bay, but that was in the US. This is our first crispy pate in the Philippines. And it looks different already, but it's basically deep fried ham hock. Okay. I couldn't even bite through it. I'm gonna be 100% honest here. I expected it to be crispier. I mean, it's in the name, crispy pata, but maybe I just got it a... Uh... Mm -hmm. I'll try another piece. So, which part, like here? Like here. All right, right here, it says part of the skin. Mm. No, still not. It's crispy for me. Yeah, it's crispy. Mm. Can you hear that? The biggest difference between this one and the one that we had at the other restaurant is that that one was not deconstructed, which makes it pretty intimidating. It was literally just a big hawk that had been deep fried, and all of that skin on the outside was incredibly crispy. It was delicious, but it's almost like we didn't know where to start. This one, I like that they pulled it all apart for us. Saves us a whole lot of effort and mind power. I think I got a really crispy piece here. 
It's like a lechon chicharron, you know? I mean, it is so crunchy and flavorful and you just get, you can tell how much fat is in there. And it's delicious because fat is flavor. Crispy and good. I definitely like this better than lechon, always have. All right, seeing how this is our last dish of the entire episode and the entire evening, Erin, what was your favorite dish overall tonight? I'm gonna have to say the pig face, the sea sig. I think I was the most excited about eating that one and the texture really impressed me and I loved the flavor. It's like everything just kind of melted together and it was just like one good, delicious flavor, but so many different parts of a pig face. What was yours, babe? It's a really hard choice because I've enjoyed so many of these at a really, really incredible level all night, but I think for me, maybe the Sinegal, because it's not one that I've had before, and it was really phenomenal. The broth was great, the vegetables were awesome, and the shrimp was perfect. Cool? Oh, intestines. Aha! They're just, it's just too good. You can't beat the chicken intestines. It's too busted. We're so grateful for G for bringing us out here showing us all these restaurants and these dishes and giving us a little taste of Pampanga like Anthony Bourdain had. But we are gonna pack up some of these dishes, take it home with us, along with our Pasa Lubong at the Cheesy Ensemadas, and we're gonna bring it back to the staff at Bale Alegria. And we are going back for the best night's sleep in one of their Cuba huts. Now you should head over to my Colt in the Wild channel and like all of my videos and make sure to subscribe to these. And while you're in the mood for subscribing, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. We love seeing you come back in each and every episode. Please give us a like and leave a comment because we love chatting with you too. And we can't wait to see you in the next episode. Since we are a family travel vlogger, since we are, ah, since we are family travel vloggers, it's only five months, but it's gonna grow bigger. Yeah. That's the one. Oh, so um, three dogs, right? three, 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 three dogs, yeah, three dogs, yeah, three of them. Yeah. yeah. So what's gonna happen today is well, number one, find scenes. <laughs>